This film begins by showing the end of summer vacation, and it's about a group of fourth grade students at Fort Myers Elementary School. They are Zane, Cole, Anthony, Jada, Summer, and Eli. At that time, they have to get ready to become fifth graders and go to middle school. On the first day of fifth grade, they meet their new teacher, Mrs. Salinas, and two class pets, Squirtle the Turtle and Leo the Lizard. During a break, the pets start talking to each other in their cage and discuss the personalities of the new fifth grade students. They think Jada is a bit arrogant, and Summer talks a lot because she's the oldest. Then Mrs. Mrs. Salinas announces a history fair competition where the winning class gets to go on a field trip to Magicland Park. The students get excited, but Mrs. Mrs. Salinas suddenly feels sick. In the afternoon, the principal and Mrs. Mrs. Salinas meet with the parents to tell them that she'll be going on maternity leave. The parents are worried because they heard the substitute teacher isn't good with kids. There, Jada tells her friends about the substitute teacher, and they plan to play a prank on her. Meanwhile, someone comments that Leo is really old, so Squirtle suggests asking another animal how old he is. For this reason, Leo wanted to join the other animals outside, so he used his long tongue to secretly set off the fire alarm. When Leo met the other animals, he asked a rabbit named Cinnabon, who was in the second grade, to figure out how old he was. Cinnabon told Leo that he was 74 years old, which made Leo worried because he thought he only had one year left to live. Later, the teachers found out that the fire alarm was fake, and all the students, including Leo, went back to their classes. Leo was sad because he thought his life was ending, even though he felt like he hadn't accomplished much, except for eating seaweed and attracting the attention of the lizard. Then, a stern-looking woman named Ms. Malkin came into the fifth-grade classroom as a substitute teacher for Mrs. Salinas, who was absent. The atmosphere in the class became tense, and Ms. Malkin gave her first lesson by asking the students to take turns bringing one of the class animals home for the weekend. When Squirtle heard this, he got scared and remembered a bad experience when a fifth-grade student took him home before and threw him into a pool and gave him a tattoo. On the other hand, Leo saw this as a chance to escape and live freely in the Everglades forest. However, no students volunteered, so Ms. Malkin chose Summer to be the first student to take Leo home. When Summer got home, she left Leo in her room. At that time, he noticed that her window was open, so he decided to escape from the container he was in. While Summer and her family spent time together, eating and watching movies until evening, Leo tried to crawl along the wall to reach the open window, but couldn't make it because he was quite old. Later, when Summer returned to her room, she was alarmed to find Leo's container empty. She frantically searched every corner of her room until she heard Leo scream when she accidentally tossed him. Summer was shocked to hear the lizard talk and couldn't believe it. Then Leo asked her to keep a secret that he could talk because only a few humans could understand him. Summer shared her struggles with communication with others, and Leo suggested that she ask more questions to improve her communication with her classmates. This motivated Summer to follow Leo's advice. The next day, Summer brought Leo back to class, where Squirtle teased him for not managing to escape. When class started, Ms. Malkin distributed thick textbooks to all the students, which frustrated Jada, especially since they had to take the heavy books home. There, Summer tried Leo's suggestion by talking to Jada about the textbooks, and Jada threatened to report it to her father. Leo watched from his cage as Summer carried out his advice from the previous night. On Friday during Ms. Malkin's lesson, the students were initially distracted by some kindergarten kids playing in the park nearby. At that time, she had to remind them to focus on the lesson. Meanwhile, Cole played a secret prank on Ms. Malkin using a projector, which made her angry, and she threw something at Cole to stop him. Later, Ms. Malkin asked which student would bring a pet over the weekend and Ailey volunteered to bring Leo. After class, Summer saw Eli heading home and asked if she could come over to play, but Ellie's mom said no because he had a fever. When Ellie got home, his mom made him wear a hazmat suit to avoid getting sick from Leo. Zane, who was playing with Eli, got uncomfortable after his snacks were ruined by Ellie's drum, so he went home. With no one to play with, Ellie went to his room, and this is when Leo saw a chance to escape. Unfortunately, while on the floor, Leo's tail got caught in an automatic floor vacuum cleaner and Ellie's pet dog, also in a hazmat suit, stopped him, foiling Leo's escape plan. In Ellie's room, Leo accidentally revealed that he could talk, and he had to lie, saying that Ellie was a special boy, asking him to keep it a secret, especially from the drones. There, Ellie explained that it was impossible because his drone constantly monitored him. Then, Leo advised Ely to write a letter to the drone, asking it not to be so strict in guarding him as Ely felt lonely without friends to play with. In the morning, the drone looked sad after reading Ely's letter. It tried to grab Ely's attention by getting into the trash can. While Leo was getting his tail treated, he advised Ely, who was having breakfast, to ignore the drone and let it think about its excessive actions. Leo also helped Ely discover his hidden talents, but instead, he showed his own skills as a lizard, like crawling and hanging on fences. The next day, all the 5th grade students brought their heavy textbooks to school again. 
Jada gave Summer a special birthday invitation. Meanwhile, Ellie returned Leo to the cage and Squirtle was shocked when he saw Leo's broken tail. In the afternoon, Jada's parents, who were school donors, protested to the principal about Ms. Malkin's teaching style, which had overwhelmed their daughter. Due to the protest, Ms. Malkin gave some relief to Jada by extending the time for her exams and allowing her to take Leo home, resolving the dispute between Ellie and Summer over who would bring the lizard. When Jada got home, she didn't pay attention to Leo at first. Instead, she complained to her father about wanting to invite the singer named Drake to her birthday party. However, her father seemed more focused on boasting about his success in securing extra exam time for her. This left Jada feeling frustrated, so she went to her room to thinking her upcoming birthday party. At that moment, Leo couldn't resist making a comment, and that's when Jada discovered that he could talk. To cover up his ability to talk, Leo lied once again, telling Jada that he was a special child who could communicate with her, and he asked her to keep it a secret from others. Leo also gave Jada some advice not to let her family's wealth make her too proud, so she could feel lighter. He encouraged her to look in the mirror and see her true self. As a result, Jada decided to invite all her classmates to her birthday party. On the day of the party, Jada was happy to see all her friends there. Meanwhile, Leo noticed a pony and a monkey fighting over food in a cage. When the pony saw Leo, they started talking about their lives spent in the stable. Soon after, Leo shared the sadness experienced by the ponies and other animals with Jada, making her invite Summer and her friends to release all the cage animals. Jada's party turned chaotic as the animals ran around, and Leo attempted to escape by riding a bubble but ultimately gave up when Jada and her friends started searching for him. When Leo returned to the classroom cage, Squirtle teased him again for not managing to escape. Over the next few weeks, Leo continued to be taken home by different students, which made Squirtle curious about why Leo was so close to all the kids. Even Jada gave Leo her cell phone number so he could easily contact her. There, Leo explained to Squirtle that he wanted to be helpful to all the students in the class before he turned 75 years old. On another occasion, Leo helped TJ, who was worried about growing thick body hair like his father during puberty. Hearing that, Leo assured TJ that body hair growth was completely normal. During the following weekend, Leo also tried to boost Cole's self-confidence. Cole used to hide his real voice when singing in front of others, but Leo encouraged him to embrace his unique voice. After taking Leo's advice, Cole became more confident and started singing with his real voice in public. Coincidentally, Mia was feeling sad because her parents had divorced and she often felt ignored. Leo cheered her up by telling her that she was a smart and kind girl. When he saw her feeling down, Leo sang a comforting song to her, recalling how his grandfather used to share stories with him before bedtime. Squirtle commented that Leo might get into trouble if he kept saying all the kids were special, but Leo explained that he just wanted to leave a positive impression before his time came to an end. In the twelfth week, when it was Anthony's turn to take care of Leo, Squirtle secretly joined him because he was worried that Anthony, who had a reputation for being mischievous at school, might harm Leo. In the evening, Squirtle, who wanted to be someone the students could talk to, invited Anthony to have a conversation, which surprised the boy. However, when Squirtle insisted that Anthony talk about something that made him sad, Anthony asked a rather unexpected question about how babies are made. At that time, Squirtle tried to explain by mentioning female turtles laying eggs on the beach, but this explanation didn't satisfy Anthony, and he got frustrated. Eventually, Anthony tied Squirtle to the window. Fortunately, Leo came to rescue his turtle friend, when Leo noticed that Anthony wasn't asleep, he became concerned that Anthony might not do well in school and suggested that Anthony should enjoy the learning process. After all the students had taken turns taking care of Leo, Ms. Nakin asked them to take care of Squirtle next. However, none of the students were willing to do it, so she reminded the students that winning the history fair competition held by the school would allow them to return to taking care of Leo. This made Squirtle suspicious thinking that Leo had persuaded the students to dislike him even though it was actually the students' choice to prefer taking care of the lizard. A little later, Leo helped the fifth grade students with various advice and many of them achieve impressive accomplishments. This made the principal proud of Ms. Malkin, the substitute teacher, who was happy to receive praise from the principal for her success in educating the students. In the evening, Leo was seen offering guidance to the students through the cell phone they had given him. Unexpectedly, Squirtle, who was feeling jealous, secretly recorded Leo chatting with many students and then shared the video with the other students. Because of Squirtle's actions, all the students found out that Leo had lied by considering them all as special children, and they expressed their disappointment in the lizard. Around that time, Ms. Malkin, who was about to enter the classroom, overheard her students' conversation with Leo, in which they mentioned how they believed in Leo, who always comforted them from the strict Ms. Malkin. Unfortunately, Leo had actually deceived all of them which made it hard for them to trust him anymore. 
After the students had left, Ms. Malkin took Leo to her house and confided in him about her sadness. She shared how she had always dreamed of being a great teacher who could make students happy, but now she was just a substitute teacher. Leo then advised Ms. Malkin to smile more at the students and not to come across as intimidating, so that they could feel her genuine care and affection. After receiving this advice from the lizard, Ms. Malkin felt relieved. She even accidentally carried Leo in her pocket while watching the fifth grade students excel in an inter-class competition. With Jada and the others' efforts, their class eventually became champions, earning them a trip to Magic Land Park with Mr. Komura. Meanwhile, the students started requesting a promise from Ms. Malkin that would allow them to take care of Leo. Their parents were impressed by Ms. Malkin's teaching system, which left her feeling embarrassed by all the praise. In a hurry, she left the school, taking Leo with her in her car. Unexpectedly, Ms. Malkin intentionally released Leo to Everglades National Park. In the evening, Squirtle appeared bothered by the constant cell phone sounds from the students trying to contact Leo, who hadn't returned to the cage yet. The next day, Ms. Malkin, upon seeing the students searching for Leo, told them a lie. She claimed that the lizard had left and left a farewell letter, even though she had written the letter herself. As she read the contents of the letter to the students, they remembered the worries and concerns they had shared with Leo. On the day of the field trip, Jada and Mia were still feeling sad about Leo's departure. At the same time, Squirtle, who knew that Ms. Malkin had taken Leo, quickly reached out to Ellie's drone for assistance in locating Leo. Meanwhile, Leo, who was in the forest, felt sad after his attempt to attract a female lizard failed. He then climbed onto the drone, which flew off to catch up with the school bus carrying the fifth grade students on their field trip. Upon catching the bus, Squirtle informed the students about Ms. Malkin taking Leo away due to jealousy, as Leo had become more popular among the students. Then, Squirtle explained that Leo was nearing the end of his life, being almost 75 years old which angered all the students. Upon hearing that, they confronted Ms. Malkin who finally admitted to leaving Leo in the dangerous Everglades forest. In an attempt to make amends for her mistake, she asked Mr. Komura to go to the forest. Unfortunately, he refused, prompting her to come up with a plan. As for Leo, he faced mockery from the forest creatures because he couldn't catch a fly. However, things took a turn when the pony from Jada's birthday party showed up and helped Leo fulfill his dream of eating seaweed. Even though his dream came true, Leo still missed the fifth grade students who used to share various things with him. Meanwhile, Squirtle and the drone decided to head to the Everglades first to search for Leo. While Mr. Komura was buying snacks for the students, Ms. Malkin tried to leave him behind so she could take the students to the Everglades. With the help of her students, she managed to escape from Mr. Komura, who was trying to stop her. However, during the commotion, she was thrown onto the bus and fainted. A student named Caber, who could drive the bus, took charge and drove it to the forest where Leo was. In the forest, Leo explained to the forest creatures that he would soon pass away because he was approaching 75 years of age. This made the forest creatures laugh, especially the lizard who were more than 100 years old. After learning that his life would be shorter, Leo asked the ponies for help in finding a way out of the forest. However, on their journey they meet a group of alligators, causing the ponies and others to run away in fear, leaving Leo all alone. In the distance, the school bus from Fort Myers Elementary School entered the forest. Ms. Malkin, who had regained consciousness, successfully defeating an alligator. They all began searching for Leo and found his shed lizard skin on a piece of wood, mistakenly thinking that Leo had passed away. This saddened everyone, but suddenly, Leo appeared from the top of a tree and explained that he had simply shed his skin. Leo then expressed his happiness for the students and Squirtle. In the end, Ms. Malkin decided to step down from her role as a substitute teacher. Before leaving, she read a fairy tale to the students. Shortly after, Mrs. Salinas entered the classroom with her newborn baby and introduced the baby to the students. Several months later, all the fifth grade students graduated from elementary school. Even though they had to bid farewell to Leo, they were grateful for the valuable lessons they had learned from him. On the other hand, Ms. Malkin was appointed as the kindergarten homeroom teacher, with Squirtle and Leo accompanying her. And the film ends. The moral lesson from this film is when puberty confuse you, consult the talking lizard for top-notch advice.